All right, we've got a nice Husqvarna 61 in. Won't start, hard to pull. Bought, used, only used a couple of times. Been sitting, all right. So, I already loosened that top cover off. And I already did loosen this air filter. But that's as far as I got. That air filter, it's not that bad, no holes in it. Looks good. So, pop this spark plug out. First thing I'm going to check is if it's scored. It's not scored, but there's a couple pits in the cylinder, which I think, I, I know I've read it was normal for some of these older Husqvarna's to have that in it. I don't know if I can get that on camera or not. Kind of hard. Oh, I see them now. There's two holes in the cylinder. I've seen this before on some of the older Husqvarna's. I think I've read though it doesn't really cause a problem, but if someone knows more about that than I do, let me know. Okay. Spark plugs a little dark colored. Not not too fouled up. Let me check my fuel. The cat might be leaking a little bit. Got a lot of sediment in that fuel. Just get rid of that. Uh, I don't. I don't see any water. Pull that fuel filter out. It's pretty dirty. I'm just gonna put some pressure in that line. if we got a fuel leak. Doesn't look like it. It's holding pressure, so the fuel line's not leaking. And uh, the, um, so far the carburetor's not leaking, on the pump side anyway. Okay, fuel filter's kind of dirty. I'm wondering if that fuel filter's just been on there too long and it's actually pulled fine particles up into the carburetor, into the into the meter, um, the screen, the little, I call it the uh, final fuel filter. It's a screen, I'll, we'll get to that. Start pulling this carburetor off. I just gotta clean up around it first. I just got that all cleaned off. I put that spark plug back in. Uh, before I get too much further, I'm just going to do a spark test. See if I can do this on the table. Break this on. Don't want it to start. Actually, I can't. I got to do it down lower. We've got spark. All right. I use this still spark tester. Zat four. Not sure if part number's on there or not. I don't think it is. Okay. I'm gonna get. Uh, actually, I think the pump side. is up here. So I'm just going to take this. I don't think it'll clear. That screw won't clear. I'm just going to pull that cover, top cover off. I think these are four millimeter. Those are. Uh, 
That one's always a little harder to get to, if I remember right. Like little grommet. It's not around the throttle properly. Okay, I'll address that. I almost need a little ball ended uh, four millimeter to get this side out. That's why I have this. I don't see a, this model very often. Okay, three millimeter there. Nope, not three millimeter. What size is that? Uh, four. Oh, that grabbed the wrong one. That was a 2.5. There's a three. Should have read that first. The washer. These got to come out first. Got that uh, intake off. Just gonna pull these four screws off. These are actually really loose. Let's pry it up right here. Yeah, there's fuel in it. Not what I expected. These. These linkages off. And that screen is not all plugged up. Huh, not what I expected. Let's clean that up. I did pull this over yesterday quite a few times and I couldn't get it to start. There's the air compressor. Um, just pull the diaphragm side off. Just saw it out of the way. Oh, this is one of the ones where the diaphragm hooks to the metering lever. There. Um, that diaphragm's old. It's snapping when I... I don't know if you can hear that. That's definitely no good in my books. I'm going to go with fuel filter, carburetor kit, and I bet that this thing will work. These are pretty good carburetors. I wonder if that needle and seat is leaking. So there's a way to check these. Um... What I have to do is get this piece off, which I'm gonna re I'm gonna replace that anyway, especially because the diaphragm side's no good. So you got our gasket and our pump membrane. See these two little flaps? I gotta cut those off. Okay, cut one off. Cut the other off. Don't damage the rest of it. Okay. We're going to reinstall this. Just like so. Oh, there. Pump, pump membrane goes toward the carburetor body. Gasket goes upwards. So, put this back on. 
I'm gonna do is test that the needle and seat are sealing. I used to keep that gasket and pump um, diaphragm there, pump, whatever you call it. I used to keep one for all the common carburetors right in my toolbox, but not, I don't have one for this carburetor that I could see in there. Tighten those screws up. I'm not putting the diaphragm side back on. There's no point. Because not for this test. Tighten those back up. All right. And then our fuel inlet. So this little this little pump just does pressure. So check it's still working. Um. Uh oh. Maybe it's not. Mm, yeah, I think it was just where my finger was on it was leaking. Might not. Might be a little worn out. All right, I don't. I don't trust it. I think. I'll just use old trusty here. Some of these tools out of my way. And the hose is a little too big, so I just need a piece of hose to connect those. Oh, I, th I had one right there. There it is. Big end. Big end in. All in. Pressure. And always good to check your pump doesn't have any leaks. So I'll just. All right, so I've put pressure. Oh. So I'm going to be putting pressure into the fuel inlet. It's going to be going through the pump. Now I've cut those little flaps out so they don't give me a false reading in case one was being held shut. Because I want to put all my pressure to my needle and seat. So I'm just gonna pump it up, not too much, half of a bar. I, oh, there it goes again. It's good, I got gas and oil on this fitting. Wait. That's, still won't hold. Poor tools. Now I got oily mix all over. All right, so it's pumped up to half of a, what you call a bar or eight PSI. And that needle is holding. If I hit that, there it goes. That carburetor needle and seat are good. Uh, that check is done. Okay, so I'm gonna take this back apart. go pump side off this is no good anymore pull that needle out because the the uh the other kit will have what kind of curb is this oh it's a tillotson so i'll have to go look my uh carburetor kit up i think i have it i try and stock all these one or two of each anyway This carburetor could be quite expensive to replace, so. but it's in very good condition. Needle and seat's holding, so that's very important. Sometimes I like to replace um, the main jet, but I'm not gonna bother right now. There is a way to test those too, but I don't have a replacement. Oh, crap, I wanted to check what these were set to, all right. I don't know that one anymore because I already turned it. But the high was three quarters out. That's normal, so I'm not even going to note anything down about that. I know I pulled the low. Let's just see. Yeah, the low was probably around one turn out. Can't be for sure now, but it wasn't like three turns out trying to compensate for something. 
Okay, I'm just gonna clean this up. Go find the carb kit and put it back together. All right, got my carb kit here. RK23HS. Fuel filter. Only a, only the OEM. I don't like aftermarket stuff. Clean. Clean piece. I use brake cleaner to clean these carburetors out. Gentle with the air. Especially around this guy and into the jets. Um, check valve. They don't like carb cleaner and they don't like a lot of air. Just give this a quick clean up. My pump cover. Same thing. Brake, brake cleaner. always have to see me re reuse those springs. They don't come with the carburetor kits. I never understood that. I'm sure we'll be replacing that needle. Possibly that stuff. It's... Now that this is dry, and the fuel, yeah, this, this diaphragm's in horrible shape. Snapping and popping, no good. All right, just clean my low jet off. And I'm just going to put that right back in now. It was around one turn, so I'll just put it back. That's my that's a good base setting for this model of saw as far as I'm aware. High jet was three quarters of a turn out so I'll probably I'm I'll, I'll probably match that yeah I'll just go a little more okay my car carburetor kit parts out Oh, I did forget to take my screen out. Nice sharp pick for that. Not in bad shape. It's actually pretty clean. But I should have a new one. And I find with the aftermarket kits, these screens aren't shaped right. So I'm just going to give this a quick clean out. Use a sharp pick to install those. Pick will go right through the screen. Just nice and gentle. Push that in until it's seated, and it's not like not all sideways. That's good. Put my fuel pump down first, and the fuel pump gasket. Okay, next is if I had this gasket, I'd replace it. I don't have it. I'm not. A, I don't have a lot of Husqvarna parts in stock, so I'm just gonna reuse it. it I'm sure it'll be fine. I do need my float pin. Drop that spring into place first. Tillotsons have a nice spring hole there. Pretty easy. I need my screw. Just drop that in. Sometimes a magnetic screwdriver doesn't help very much. It just pulls the screw out of place. Okay. 
Now on Tillotson's, I believe this stays level with the body of the, the um, not, not this, but in here. I'll just check that. I don't have a Tillotson metering. So it does, it just kind of moves it when the, it hits. I don't like seeing that. I like it to be flush, but not able to be moved. So it's, it's just not touching that. I just bent that down a bit. It was a little high. Not all these carburetors are the same. All right, good enough. Gasket first. It's easy to mess this order up. Sometimes I get these in the gas, the, the diaphragms on, then the gasket on top. That is incorrect. So gasket. And you got a hook diaphragm into the metering lever. Get this straightened out again. And get our cover back on. Get the screws started. Don't need these. There are bad parts out of here. I'll probably keep that because I know I have a couple other of these to check coming up soon. I got a 394. XP ordered crank seals. They took a while. We knew it wasn't scored. And I had a vacuum leak, but the carbs also almost, it was almost borderline replacement. So anyway, don't need to get into that just yet. That might be in another video or later on in this one. Fuel line looks fine. It wasn't leaking. Tested it for pressure and it was okay. So, and I get this back on. How do I do that again? Sorry, I'm not familiar. I don't work on Husqvarna's all the time. Okay, so, like that. I got my intake air filter adapter. Okay, first was my throttle rod. Twist that into place. Next was my adjuster, which is filthy. I'm going to blow that out. Not sure what happened on this side of that. It's just your guide for your screws. Huh. Well, I don't have one, so it's just going to have to go back on for now. I'm not gonna put my fuel on line on just yet. Hook my choke back up. Oh, something just ain't right here. Oh, it's this. That's all been just damaged by somebody not putting that back together correctly. I'm just gonna trim that a bit. It's giving me a bit of a problem here. I'll just have to inform them that needs to be replaced. I just had to trim that a little bit off. Giving, just not letting me install the carburetor properly. Oh, that's better. There we go. Okay. Um, I probably have to put this in position first. This is this always kind of is weird to me. All these screws don't quite line up. There, okay. Just get 
this guy, the, this one in first. Get this one started. I hear the geese outside. Sounds like they're on their way back. All right, that's tightening up nice. Before I tighten that one in, I'll just get this other side all the way in. Throttle's working, choke is working. T-driver. Snuggles up. I don't have the fuel filter on yet. I'm just going to right. just blew the fuel line out a bit first. My new fuel filter on. And it's got a bit of a memory to it, so I'm just gonna snip that end off. Kind of where it was on the old filter. Those are a great tool. I think I found them in the near, near the nail clipper section at uh, one of the stores. They're great for cutting fuel lines. Where's not Snap on Revlon? <laughs> anyway, they work good for that stuff. Very sharp. All right, get my fuel filter on. That's a. OEM Husqvarna filter. See the color difference there. I'm going to give this a new spark plug also. It's got that end I don't like on the twist one. You can see where the coil, the ignition lead the little coil wire has been chewing right into those. It gives a bad contact after long enough. So use an NGK. Okay. Put that on. Uh, my fuel cap leaks, but I don't think I have that O ring. Could just be the dirt too. A little bit of sawdust on there. We'll see. I'll just give that air filter. I'm gonna I'm just gonna split this apart. Break clean. like new no holes in the in the um i think this is the winter filter but that's what it has on it and install that i think the saw is gonna fire right up i'm guessing when they built these saws back in the i don't know when the first six with this generation they weren't expecting ethanol maybe to be in the fuel at that time I get all the Chinese stuff over here and it does not like ethanol. I, I don't know, do they use ethanol over there? That could be the issue too. I wonder if all their, their products aren't made to deal with ethanol. That would explain things. 
carburetor has been done, fuel filter, fuel line looked fine to me. It held the uh, pressure. So it's not here for anything else. Uh, won't start hard to pull, bought, used, and only used a couple of times. It's been sitting. I'm going to go outside, give this a, a start. See what happens. Okay, just uh, started up pretty nice. What was that three or four pulls? Um, chain wouldn't stop it. Clutch springs maybe could be uh, worn, but I got. I'm gonna hook the tack up and get the final uh, carburetor settings down. Maybe it was just. It didn't seem to be idling very high, but the chain kept going. Clutch springs, I'm sure, which I wouldn't have here anyways. So I'm gonna let the customer know kind of a safety issue. I don't like sending them out with uh, worn clutch springs. Chain shouldn't be turning. Nice saw. Runs good. Starts freight back up. One pull. Idles nice. Revs out pretty good. That, that's it for that saw. Thanks for watching.